We talked about hydrogen's emission spectrum a few videos ago. We can only see specific colored lines on this spectrum because they correspond with the energy changes that occur when an electron emits energy in the form of light. Among the lines that we see in the Balmer series of hydrogen's emission spectrum is a line at 656 nanometers. This light is emitted when the 3D electron is transformed into a 2P electron. This makes sense based on what we've talked about in past videos, but it doesn't quite answer something we mentioned in the previous video. How is it that multi-electron atoms can have up to six 2p electrons? We start to get our answer from an experiment that Zeeman performed over a hundred years ago. For reasons that are still not always clear, physicists love putting things in magnetic fields. It's just what they do for fun. So that's what he did. He applied an external magnetic field to the sample of hydrogen that was emitting light. And guess what happened? The single line that we usually see at 656 nanometers in the spectrum, the one that's the result of a 3D electron becoming a 2P electron, split into three closely spaced lines. What do you think each line represents? That's right, each line represents a distinct change in an electron, but what other changes are happening now that there is a magnetic field? Let's investigate. It turns out that electrons with quantum numbers n equals 3 and l equals 2, which are 3D electrons, can actually have five different orientations in three-dimensional space. And electrons with n equals 2 and l equals 1, you know, 2p electrons, can have three different orientations in 3D space. And when you have an external magnetic field, the differently oriented orbitals have slightly different energies. Let's start by examining the 2p orbitals. How many nodal planes does a 2p electron wave have? That's right, a 2p orbital has a single nodal plane. That's why it's L equals 1. And the direction of this nodal plane will determine the orientation of the orbital. If the nodal plane is here, then the orbital's electron density is along the x-axis. We call this the 2px orbital. If instead the nodal plane is here, then we get the 2py orbital. Finally, this orbital, with the nodal plane in the xy plane, is the 2pz axis. As long as there is no magnetic field, because who walks around with a magnetic field anyway, then all three of these orbitals are degenerate, which means that they have the same energy. But in the presence of a magnetic field along the z axis, the px and py orbitals will no longer be the same energy. For historical reasons, the magnetic field is always along the z axis. Each orientation is represented by a new quantum number, the magnetic quantum number, which is denoted by m sub l. A p orbital oriented along the z-axis has m sub l equals zero. The other two orbitals are assigned values of plus one and negative one. Notice that the shapes of all of the two p orbitals are the same. Why would you predict this is? It is the azimuthal quantum number l that tells us about the shape of the orbital. Because L is the same for all of the 2p orbitals, they all have the same shape. They're also all the same size, since they have the same principal quantum number, n equals 2. But because their m sub L values are different, their orientations in 3D space are different. Now let's take a look at an s orbital. We know that the 3D shape of s is a sphere. Based on this information, how many different orientations would you predict that an s orbital could have? A sphere can't really have different orientations, so the number of orientations that an s orbital can have is just one. When drawn on an axis, it looks like this. That means that the only value of m sub l for an s orbital is zero. In general, the rule is that the values of m sub l for a given orbital range from minus l to plus l in whole number increments. How many different values of m sub l are there for d orbitals? Since d orbitals have two nodal planes, l equals 2, there are five different values of m sub l. How many different 4f orbitals, l equals 3, are there? There are two l plus 1 equals 7 different 4f orbitals. Their orientations are different, but they have two things in common. They have n equals 4, so they are the same size and energy, and L equals 3, so they have three nodal planes. 
Recall that in the previous video, we briefly defined the Pauli exclusion principle as saying that no two electron waves can have the same set of quantum numbers. So this new quantum number that we just learned about, the magnetic quantum number, gives us a little more specificity in describing an electron wave. So for our 2p electrons, there are three possible orbitals. But this still doesn't explain why there is a maximum of six possible 2p electrons. For that, we will still need one more quantum number, but we'll talk about that in the next video.